Hello again, Patrick here with another Godot tutorial. Today we'll be looking at creating both a player and a ball that he can bounce around using rigid body 2Ds. As you know I had been experimenting with trying to bounce the ball around with the player as a kinematic body 2D and the ball as the rigid body 2D. Uh, I'd even tried doing it with both of them being kinematic body 2Ds and there were just a lot of issues um, but I really like a lot of the built-in mechanics with the rigid body 2D, so I figured that um, even though there were a lot of issues between kinematic to rigid body interactions, uh, if you could create a good player with a rigid body 2D, then that would eliminate some of that problem because the two bodies would uh, very naturally react off of each other with uh, the built-in physics. So. Um, we have a new project here. I have um, just a basic node scene that I called world. It's set up as the initial program, uh, I'm sorry, the initial scene to run as we play. Uh, I went ahead and used static body 2Ds for the, the floor, the left and right walls, and the ceiling. Um, basically just with some collision shapes and um, and I use the uh, the Godot icon as the um, oops as the texture for the sprites attached to them, and then just change the modulate to to all black just to create these walls. Uh, so we're going to start with coming up here to World, and we're going to go ahead and create the ball first. So we're going to go ahead and do a rigid body 2D. We're going to call this ball. Oops. Uh, I'm not going to bother attaching a sprite to it because uh, all I'm going to do is we're just going to run this with visible collision shapes. That way all I need to do is just show you the collision shapes for it. You can plug in any, um, any sprite, any image that you want. So let's go ahead and add a collision, oops, collision shape 2D. We'll go ahead and make this a circle uh, as our a new circle shape. And I think we'll try 24 as the radius size. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and move this ball out of the corner there. We'll just put it in the center of the screen up nice and high. Now this, being a rigid body 2D, already has some physics built in. So if I play it, if I play the scene, there we have our ball, and then it hits the ground. Oh, that was a little bit glitchy, but it hits the ground, and there we have it. But we want it to do more than that, so we're going to go to physics material. We're going to click that drop down we're going to hit new physics material and then we're going to click on that physics material and we're going to add some bounce now the bounce if you look at the instructions as I hover over this it its values range from 0 to 1 so uh, don't make the mistake that I made and think oh I want more bounce so I'll give it a bounce of like 30 or 50 uh, anything above 1 won't really matter. So we want to utilize uh, decimals, so between 0 to 1, so like we could do say 0 0.8 for our gravity. Now, I'm sorry, not for gravity, I'm sorry, for our, for our bounce. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit less. Let's go 0 0.7. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, and there's a pretty good bounce right there. Very slow moving though, unfortunately. So let's let's change that. So we're gonna change the gravity scale to eight times what the default is in the project settings. Uh, that's what I like, but I mean, you know, it could be different if it was a beach ball or a balloon. It would have a different gravity effect on it. So there we go. 
and it bounces and comes to a stop. Now there is one problem that we see. Notice that dot, that red dot at the bottom that keeps flashing. What that's telling me, and see how it's kind of shaking a bit? It's telling me that this ball, even though it looks like it's not bouncing anymore, it actually is still bouncing. It's just really tiny bounces and they won't stop. Uh, maybe if I applied a higher dampening, maybe that would go away, but no, it doesn't look like it is. So, so here's what we're going to do to fix that. We're going to go ahead back to the ball node. We're going to add an area 2D. Okay, uh, we'll give that area 2D a collision shape. Collision shape 2D. And we'll give it a circular shape. What did I say was the circular extents for this? Oh yeah, 24 for the radius. So we'll do the same here. We'll give it a radius of 24. Alright. Now we're also going to give the ball a script. So let's go ahead and do that now. Make sure it's an empty template so I don't have all that crap to delete. So we're going to hit load. Get rid of this. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I was playing around with this earlier, so uh, let me get rid of the um, previous scripts I had so that we can... Uh, Discard that, we'll delete, oops, remove, yeah, my apologies there, I had some, um, I had already worked this out before um, and done a, a video previously, but the video was just way too long, so uh, I thought I'd redo the video in just kind of show you everything from scratch so all right so we're going to attach yeah i don't know why that script is still there let's go ahead and get rid of that and let's go ahead and just close okay here we go all right so we're going to attach the script we'll create that script here we go nice fresh new script uh we're going to go ahead and connect the signal from this area 2D with a body entered signal. Go ahead and connect that to the ball script. And here we are. Uh, we're going to create a variable up here. We're going to call that bounce count. We'll set it to zero. So what I want to do is, as this ball bounces, I want to basically see um, how many times it bounces and after it bounces so many times we're gonna go ahead and set its linear velocity on the y-axis to zero so it doesn't keep moving it doesn't keep bouncing up and down so the area 2d is looking for a body entered now the body that I created here is called floor. That's its name. So in this function here from that area 2D, we're going to say oops, if body dot name equals floor, make sure you spell it correctly, capitals and everything, then we're going to say bounce count plus equals one. And we're going to say print bounce count. Just to show you what's happening there. Okay, so let's hit play. Let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Da, da, da and notice that it keeps registering bounces to infinity so we gotta put a stop to that so let's get rid of all this 
So how we're going to do this is we're going to say if body.name equals floor, we're going to increase the bout counts by one. Um, and then we're going to say else, oops, else bounce count equals zero. That's important because we want the bounce count to reset to zero if it touches um, the player or the wall or something. Uh, otherwise, like the minute it, it got uh, the bounce count ran up to the limit that we're going to set it to and then uh, and then wouldn't fire anymore, then we would have a ball that just would be a dead ball. It just would not bounce. So uh, let's see here. We're going to create a, a function up here called integrate forces. Whenever we do any kind of um, manipulation of the, of the physics of a rigid body 2D, we can't use uh, the normal um, physics process. We need to use this function instead. And um, But you know what? Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't even need to do that with this. Um, wait, or do I? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay. So basically, what we're gonna what we're gonna say in this function is, if bounce count is greater than or equal to, uh, I don't know, we'll say ten. Then we're going to set the ball's linear velocity dot y. Very important that we specify dot y to zero. Oops equals zero. Now I could have done it a couple ways. I could have done it that way or I could have said linear velocity equals vector 2 and then in here we would have said um, well see no we don't want to do that because if I were to say uh, z you know, oops, 0 slash 0 but then that means too that my x velocity would also go to zero. You know, or if I had said vec vector two dot zero. So either, oops, I misspelled that, but you get the idea. Um, either way, that's not going to give me the effect that I want. Uh, unless I did like vector two and I said, uh, I don't know, um, linear velocity comma, zero. So like whatever the ball's x linear velocity already is, um, and then zero. But it looks like I'm getting an error there. So I guess I can't really do that anyway. So anyway, all of that just to say that it's much easier to just say linear velocity dot y. I'm going to say it equals zero. So now when we play this, We'll see that the bounce will die down as it's supposed to, and we'll get our counts. Now it will give us probably one or two more counts beyond the limit we set. Yeah, see, we told it ten, but it actually did a couple more bounces. But it did kill its momentum, so it's no longer bouncing. See, there's no red mark happening at the bottom to indicate a collision or a bounce collision, I should say, and then. Um, and the ball doesn't isn't shaking anymore like it sometimes does. So that's one way that we can avoid that whole issue. Let's clear all this stuff out. Okay. So that pretty much covers what we should do for the ball. So next thing we need to look at now is the Player. Let me see if there's anything I'm forgetting about the ball, though. Um, yeah, I can't. I don't really see much of anything on there. Gravity. The damp. The dampening. 
the friction we talked about. Okay, so let's go ahead and come back over here to our world. We'll click on that. We'll go ahead and add another um, rigid body. 2D. We'll go ahead and call this player. And just like before, we're not going to bother adding a sprite. We'll just go ahead and add a collision shape 2D. And for this guy's shape, we'll go ahead and do a capsule shape instead of a, of a circle shape. And I don't know, we'll say. Uh, we'll go a little bit bigger than what the original one was, which was 24. We'll make it 30 by, I don't know, uh, 48. Yeah, that, that looks good. I just made it a little bit bigger than the ball just to make it a little bit easier to kind of bounce. Now, if we wanted to, we could add multiple collision shapes. Like, I could come up here and add another one. Make it like a circle shape 2D and uh oh. Oh, foo. I accidentally moved the collision shape, but I didn't move the player node. So let me just recenter that guy again. And we'll come up here to the player, make sure we move tool selected. We'll move the player here. Okay, good, good, good. And then, like, I could take that second collision shape, click back on the arrow, and I could move it up here and make it real big if I wanted just to give me a bigger surface for hitting the ball with um, and it could be like the head you could construct a whole stick man I guess if you wanted to uh, out of collision shapes um, yeah we'll do that just for fun okay so so there's our player uh, let me think here we actually do need to add an area 2D on him because since this is not a kinematic body 2D, uh, I don't think there is an is on floor method that we can look at in there. So we're going to have to sort of create our own is on floor device. So we're going to make an area 2D. Uh, we'll give it its own collision shape. Okay, and I'm going to make this also a capsule. It could have been a circle. I guess it doesn't really matter. And we'll use 30 by 48. Well, the height doesn't really matter as much. Or the width, I mean, doesn't matter as much. Let's see, 48. Wait, what? Why is that not the same as the other? Height. Right. That's strange. Very bizarre. I'm not sure why it's not as big as the other one. That's bizarre. Alright, well, anyway. I'll make it a little bit wider. Huh, strange. Oh, wait, maybe it has to do with... Okay, I see why. If I had done the same width, then it would have made the the number work out the same too. Okay, I see I see the issue now. Okay, trying to center that back up, but it's been a little bit difficult. Okay, there we go. I want to make it just a tiny bit bigger than my normal collision shape, just to make sure that it, it is uh, detecting the collision shape of the ground. Maybe the wall if I wanted to do something with that later. So make it just a slight bit bigger. Okay. Because it's not going to affect like the boundaries of the player's collision shape, like where his feet would touch the floor. Uh, it's, it'll actually extend slightly past his actual collision uh, because this is just for an area 2D. Now, the area 2D is important when we set up our jump mechanic. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to attach a script to the player. Create. We'll, 
let's put a few variables down here. We'll make them export variables. Why is it capital E? Export. No, I think it's just regular E. Export variable. We'll call it run speed. And we'll I'll just figure out an, a, uh, an arbitrary number. We'll just say, I don't know, uh, 400. Okay. What did I... What did I do wrong here? Why am I getting an error? Is it supposed to be capitalized? Oh, for Pete's sake. No. What am I doing wrong here? This should be working. Let me try this again. Export variable run speed equals 400. All right, working now. I must have misspelled something and just didn't couldn't see it. Okay, export. Maybe I had a space in there or something. Export variable jump force equals, uh, I don't know, 500. We'll play with these numbers. That's why we're making them export variables, because when we play the, when we run the game, over here in our little control panel, whatever you call this, uh, you'll see run speed, jump force, so I can tweak these without having to keep resetting the game to test everything out. All right. Um, we'll do another variable. Um, We'll call it um, slow down rate. And we'll just put that at, for now, we'll just put it at, I don't know, 0 0.1, just to keep it basic. OK, very good. All right, so we need to go ahead and create that integrate forces function again. And first thing that I like to do is um, set up a variable called x input, and it's going to equal input dot get action strength. Now I already set up a, a bunch of controls in the project manager here. Uh, we have uh, down here at the bottom, so I don't have to use the UI left and all that stuff. Um, I have left, a right, a jump, and then a kick, like to kick the ball up in the air. Um, for left, I did keyboard, the A button, the A key on the keyboard, and the D key for right, so left and right. Uh, jump is keypad one, so I can do that with my right hand, move with my left, jump with my right and also kick with my right on keypad too. Um, you know, you can set up whatever mapping you want in yours, but this is just what I like because I prefer my hands to be separate. But I also added controls for uh, doing the left stick on a game controller, left and right, and then uh, where the X button would be and the square button would be on a PlayStation controller um, for the jump and then for the kick. So that's what I have here. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to get the mathematical difference between the numeric value of a left push and a right push. Now right on the x-axis would have a value of positive one, whereas left would have a value of negative one. One mistake I commonly make, and I see others make with this, is they try to do get action strength of the left control minus the right control. It actually needs to be the larger number minus the lesser number, the small number. So we're going to do get action strength right minus, and i got to type all that up again, input dot get action strength left. And that will give us either a positive or negative one value, uh, depending on whether we're pushing right or left controls. We're going to do one more variable up here that I just thought of. We're going to call this. Yikes. You okay back there, honey? That's a cat. 
Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, we're going to do another variable called direction, and we'll just set it to 1 as default. Let's see here. We'll come back to why we're using this later. Um, but anyway, so let's get into moving the character left and right, moving the player left and right. Ooh, I just remembered something. But I'll hold that thought, and you'll see why here in a minute. So um, we're going to say if, let me just back up. What we're trying to accomplish here with this x input is, you know, we have that numeric value that's that uh, comes up depending if we push left or right. We want to make it so that uh, the player will move only if there is a 1 or negative 1 value. So that means that if it is not equal to 0, because if it's equal to 0, it means that I'm not pushing either left or right button. Okay, Or if I'm pushing them both at the same time, it would actually also cancel each other out and equal 0. And so the player should not be moving either way. That's why I like to use this method. So if, you have, if you're using keyboard controls instead of a game controller, and you accidentally push both left and right at the same time, you're not going to you know, keep moving in one direction. So we're going to say if x input does not equal, that's what the exclamation point with an equal sign means. It means that it's not equal to 0, which means that I must be pushing a button down somewhere if it doesn't equal 0. So if x put, if, sorry, if x input does not equal 0, then we're going to change the linear velocity dot x this time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make it equal to run speed times x input. That's important because if I'm moving, if I'm pushing right, I'm going to have a positive 1 value for my x input variable. And so as I plug in this run speed for 400, I want to times it times one uh, times positive 1. Or if I was pushing left, then I would have a negative 1 value for x input. So run speed 400 times negative 1 would give me negative 400. And so I would run negative 400 to the left. So it works out very brilliantly this way. Uh, I can't take credit for this, though. Uh, I think this was a method I learned from Heartbeast. He, he has some really excellent tutorials. Um, okay. And then we're going to put an else in there. So else, the only else would be if x input does equal 0. So else, we're going to say linear velocity equals 0. So it's plain and simple, pretty straightforward. Now we're going to clean this up and make this a little bit better. Uh-oh. Oh. I made this mistake before. <laughs> I forgot to specify that it's linear velocity dot x. Very important, because we had an error otherwise, because it was looking for a vector 2 value that should have two numbers, a 0, you know, a, you know two numbers within that parentheses of a vector 2, separate by the comma. But since we're only looking for x, it's only looking for one number. I prefer this method. It's just much simpler, in my opinion. Some people prefer to go more with the, just the linear velocity and use vector 2s everywhere. OK, so this should work. Let's go ahead and give that a test. And you're going to see something interesting happen here. Oh, that's some slow gravity there. All right, ready to start moving? Here we go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It is not moving. Uh-oh. Something is amiss. Okay, what? Oh, wait. Let's try something here real quick. Let's go to player, and let's come over here on the right-hand side, and... Where is it? Oh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and give him a physics material also. That way, we can make sure like things like gravity and whatnot are where we want them to be. Um, 
Actually, we'll put his friction to like a low number, like 0 0.1. All right. So what am I doing wrong here? Right and left. If it doesn't equal 0. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and just so we can kind of watch what's happening with the numbers, let's print x input. Oops. X input. Okay. So let's see if the X input is at least uh, functioning as it's supposed to. Okay, so it says it's zero right now. If I push that, so it's one. Oh, oh, and we're moving. I don't know what, maybe it was the whole not having physics material. Anyway, so look what's happening to our guy. Oh no, he's falling over. He's had a little too much to drink. <laughs> he's going everywhere. So, there's a way to fix this. Really simple, really easy. This is the thing I said earlier that I forgot to mention, but I said, I, I'll just show you why. Uh, when we come up here to the mode on under Rigid Body 2D, we need to put it on character mode. That will keep him upright and prevent him from rotating. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, there he is on the ground. Moving, moving. Looks pretty good. Except for one interesting thing. As I push the ball, see what, what what's happening to him? How he's actually... And I think this will be more, um, this will be easier to see if I actually change the weight of the ball. So let's go ahead and make the ball nice and heavy. Okay, so we'll make it 20. I think, what is the player? Like, the player's weight is it like a, 9 pounds. Okay, so now let's see. See what's happening as I'm pushing him, how he's kind of sort of crawl, climbing up over the ball. And we don't want that to happen. Let's, just to make it even more obvious, let's go ahead and make him, like, super heavy. Okay, we'll come back over here. So now look, boom. <laughs> he, like, ramped up over top of him. So this is why for, uh, why we don't want to have any friction. Uh, but still shouldn't have had that much of an effect on him. Well, maybe it's because of the weight. Let's see. Let's come back to the ball. Let's make the ball like 20 pounds or whatever that number means. Let's make the player like 100. Okay, let's see how that looks. There we go. Still moving up a little bit. I don't, I'm not crazy about that. I'm not sure why that's happening. Maybe it has to do with the gravity too. So let's change that. Let's go ahead and come over to the player. Let's see, what's gravity here? Eight. Let's make the player the same. Let's just go ahead and put him all the way up to eight. Our damp is a negative one, so that's pretty good. Here we are. We'll let that ball come to a stop. Okay. Yeah, it's still doing it, though. That's strange. I'm not sure why that's doing that. Because I wasn't doing that before on me. I've, I'm doing something differently than the last time I've, I've done this project. Hmm. Very strange. Huh. Interesting. Well, let's figure it out. Let's see what's going on here. So the player... Well, I didn't do this extra collision shape last time. Let's get rid of that. Just I don't think that it has anything to do with it. But just, just in case there's something I'm not aware of. Let's see. The player... No friction. He's absorbent. No, he's not absorbent. Uh, gravity is 8. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm not really sure why. What's going on here with that? Anything in my script that's doing that? Huh, very strange indeed. No friction. It's not rough. And it's got a good bounce. Hmm. Very bizarre. Let's make the ball a little bit heavier. Come back up to the player. He's at a hundred. Huh, very strange. No bounce. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what's happening there. Well, maybe it'll become clear as we press on. We'll just move forward for now. Um, hmm. Okay, well, we need to add a jump, so let's go ahead and do that first. So, we're going to say if input dot is action just pressed, and that'll be jump. Then linear velocity is going to, we could just say plus equals or equals. Um, We'll just do equals for now. Equals jump force. Okay, that should be pretty good. Let's come up here so we can tweak these numbers a little bit. In case it's too too much of a jump. Uh oh, we have a we have an error. Okay, let's see here. Error setting property. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> Same mistake. Linear velocity dot y. Ay, ay, ay. Easy enough mistake to make. Okay, so now we should be good to go. So. Oh, foo. <laughs> you know what my other mistake was? I forgot to set jump force to a negative value. Now it should work. Yep, there we go. There's our our negative 500 jump right there. It works. Okay, very good. Hmm. I still don't like how that's happening. That should not be happening. Very strange indeed. All right, now notice that when he, he stops, he just stops really abruptly. So we're going to fix that also. So all we're going to do is here in the script, uh, when we say if, it, if input uh, x input is not 0, we, we move at run speed times input. However, if it is 0, then uh, we're going to set linear velocity x to 0. Instead of setting it to 0 straight away, will gradually decrease it to zero with a linear interpretation, or a lerp. So we're basically going to, uh, for this we're going to say, we're going to change linear velocity from uh, whatever the linear velocity dot x happens to be at the time to zero over a rate of 0 0.1, 0 0.25, whatever rate you want. That's why we use this slowdown rate. We're just going to plug that variable in so we can play with that and tweak it if we don't like what it, the way it looks as he slows down. So that'll look a lot nicer now. <clears throat> so, see a nice little gradual stop whenever you let go. Nice. I still don't like that. Why is it doing that? It should not be doing that. Very bizarre. Hmm. I mean, at least it doesn't do it until he's up against the wall. So that's... That's something. And then we have our jump. We can land on top. He just bounces a little bit. 
which is kind of nice. Okay. Looks pretty good. And at least he's not sending them through the wall, which is an important thing, too, to keep in mind. We don't want that to happen. Okay. But now the other problem we run into is we jump, but look, we can keep jumping in the air. And usually we don't want to do that. So, here's what we're going to do. This is where the Area 2D that we put on the player is going to come into play. So let's go ahead and connect a signal here. We're going to say, body entered. Make sure we attach it to the player node. Now you see I'm putting all the... I'm putting the player and the ball all in the same seat. Normally if I were making a game a little more seriously, I would actually make each of these their own separate um, scenes that I can then uh, instantiate into the main scene. Alright, so uh, we're going to say if body whoops, dot name equals floor well yeah what if it equals floor what are we going to do about it well we ha we're going to make another variable up here and we're going to call this um, jump able <laughs> just to say that you can jump okay or we'll I will say can jump and we're going to set it to false at first, yeah. Okay, it doesn't matter. Either way, we'll be fine. Because we're going to say that if the player touches another object, another body, with the name Floor, then we're going to go ahead and uh, set can jump equal to true. Oops. Now this is important because up here where we have our, our jump code here, we're going to put a condition. We're going to say if can jump equals true, then we'll set linear velocity. But at the same time, we also need to make sure that as soon as we've pushed that button and it's checked that it was true, that it's going to immediately set can jump equals to false. So that way now you've jumped you're in the air and it's no longer true, so you, you could push jump all you want, but it's not going to make you jump again. Until your feet have touched the floor and reset this boolean back to true again. Now we should be good with the basic jump mechanic. So here's our jump. And I'm jumping in the air and nothing's happening. So, there you go. So we're good to go there. And there we have that. Now the other problem that we're having here with just in this particular game is just that we have... Um, we have... Um, a ball that uh, we want to bounce around, but we're having a hard time getting it up in the air. So we're going to go ahead and create a... Uh, a mechanic to launch the ball up in the air, uh, we'll let the player be able to kick the ball up into the air. And it could be kick or scoop it up with his hand, or whatever, um, however you would decide to animate it. So we're going to come back to the player. We're going to go ahead and add another area 2D. And we're going to call this the kick box. Go ahead and put a collision shape on that. Okay, and we'll just go ahead and make it. We'll make it a rectangle this time. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. It could be round. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it up a little bit. Okay, pretty good. Um, okay, so here's what I need to do, though. Ultimately, what's going to happen is we're going to have this guy rotate out. 
when we push a button. Uh, now this could work if, like, say this were another uh, physics body, sort of connected to it like a skeleton, uh, which is something I haven't worked out yet, and something that I'm, I'm kind of in the process of learning. Uh, so we're not going to do that for this tutorial. This is just going to be the area 2D moving out. So really, it's not even necessary to rotate it out. I just wanted to kind of do it just to show how to set it up. I could just have any shape and just have, when you push a button, it just moves it out and then moves it back in again, which is actually how I initially had this set up. But um, for now, that's what we'll do. Uh, we're going we're gonna to rotate it. So I need to move the the node point of the area 2D itself oops let's undo that I need to move it higher so make sure I hit the move tool so I can just grab that hold the control button to keep it uh, centered in the middle and we'll move it up okay and now I'll grab my collision shape and we're gonna move it down so that its pivot point is now here so now, if I click back on the arrow, arrow, hold the control key down and try to move it. And, whoops, it's still not working. What the heck? Uh, let's just move this whole guy out here so I can see what's happening a little bit better. So here's the collision shape. There's the kickbacks. Okay, so it should be working. Oh, wait, I know what I did wrong. Okay. Okay, so we'll move this guy back. Now when I'm, I rotate this, I'm not actually going to rotate the collision shape. I'm actually just going to rotate the whole kickbox itself. Oh, come on. It's not letting me do it, though. Oh, that's right. i got to have the arrow selected. So now, if I move the kickbox, you see the whole thing comes out. So that would be really good if it was like an arm swinging up to hit it. You know, or if it was a leg, you know, just depending on what dimensions of your player are. Um, we'll just go with that for now. That looks good. I like the length because I want it to have a nice long reach as it comes out, so that's important. Okay. So we got to add a couple more things. Um, now, uh, there may be better ways to do this, and if anybody has any other suggestions how I could do this with one tween instead of two tweens, I, I, you know, I'd be happy to hear uh, your suggestion. Um, you know, I, I, I'm sure there is a way to do it with just one. But I'm going to use two tweens just for now, just because this is just how I understand it. It's just simpler for me to get it down. So we're going to go ahead and add a node. We're going to go ahead and add a tween. And we'll go ahead and duplicate that tween. We'll call this um, KB for kickbox move. And we'll just, just, we'll just call it kick because we're kicking the ball. And then uh, we'll say KB reset because we're resetting the position of the kickbox after we have kicked. So we have one tween for um, rotating the kickbox out and one tween for bringing it back. Um, maybe something with easing. No, no, no. Scratch that. Just ignore what I just said there. Okay. So we'll go back to the script now, and I guess this could happen in, in Integrate Forces. I don't think it'll hurt anything to add it in here. So we're going to say if input dot is action just pressed kick colon, then. We're going to use a dollar sign to uh, access the, the kick tween that we just had. And we're going to go ahead and use a method called interpolate property. Now, the uh, you see there's a, this big long line of text here. This is telling us all the things that need to be in those parentheses. The object uh, and the object's property, its node path, the initial value and then to the final value where it's going to go and then other things like uh, what, what uh, amount of time the transition should happen over and what kinds of transitions they should be like different kinds of waveforms for them and easings and whatnot we're not going to mess with all that we're just going to do the bare essential the object the property 
the initial and final values and how long it's going to take to change them. So the, the uh, object that we're going to be changing is dollar sign kickbox. Oops, if I can spell it properly. We're going to change the kickbox, comma. When you put the comma, it puts that reminder back up for you so you know what to put next. Very nice. Uh, we're going to change, and we got to put whatever the properties we're changing needs to go in quotations. We're going to change the rotation underscore degrees. Now, if you're not sure why that is, or you know, just want to understand that, if I go here to the kickbox area 2D, and we go down to transform, we see different properties we can transform. It's position, it's scale, and of course here in the middle, how much it rotates, right? Now if I rotate it this direction, we see that that's about minus 90, minus 90 degrees. Let me reset that. And then if we go, if we rotate it the other direction, it'll be a, a, in a positive because that's a clockwise rotation, these positive numbers, and counterclockwise rotation is negative. So, um, so we're going to change from 0 to negative 90 in like a fraction of a second. So, and if you hover over this, you, it should give you instructions uh, on that telling you that the property name is rotation underscore degrees. So that's the name of the property we're going to be messing with here. Okay, so we'll put a comma. And now the initial value, we could say it's zero, but maybe we push the button again halfway through another kick that we had previously initiated. And so it's at a different value. So we're just going to go ahead and say kick box dot rotation degrees. So whatever rotation degree it happens to be at at the time that we push the kick button, it's going to be its starting point. And then the final starting point is going to be negative 90. OK? But we're also going to say, well, OK, we'll just leave it at that just to keep it simple right now. I'll come back and add something later. So rotate, kick box is the object. The property is rotation degrees. We're going to start at whatever its rotation degrees value happens to be. And we're going to end it at negative 90. And we're going to do it over a time period of 0 0.25 seconds. We'll say a quarter of a second. We could do a smaller number if we wanted to go faster. Now, please, if you don't remember anything else that I tell you in this video, remember this, because this is such a frustrating problem and such a stupid mistake that had cost me hours of second-guessing my code and trying to figure out what I was doing wrong in this line when actually everything I was doing was perfectly fine. I forgot that when you need to launch a tween, not only do you need to put all this stuff in, but then the next line you'd need to say the name of the tween dot start with, with parentheses after very important because none of this stuff will will even start if you don't tell it to start. And I often forget that. Even now I still forget it and get frustrated. Like, Why isn't it working? So just remember that. Very important. Save you many, many headaches and, <laughs> and, and a lot of rage quitting. Okay. So, so let's try that. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, here's my guy. Here he is. I'm going to hit the kick button. Yay, it works. Except now he's stuck out there. He's just kind of moving around like that. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to now come to this. Well, we're going to come to that first tween that we just uh, worked out and, and launched. And we're going to go ahead over to the node tab here. And we're going to give this a signal upon completing itself. When it does its job, it's finished, or double click that, make sure we attach it to the player script, not the ball script. We're going to connect, and we're going to say that once it's finished doing that, then 
we're going to go ahead and start the second tween that I have on here, which is kickbox reset or KB reset. Oops. Dot interpolate proper now. You know what? We would type all this basic stuff out that we did. And yeah, I'll just do it real quick. Um, kickbox is what's being affected. Uh, rotation underscore degrees is the property. Uh, whatever, oops, whatever its initial rotation degrees happens to be, and we're going to reset it to zero. We're going to do it over a time of, we'll make it a little bit faster going back. So it goes out and then, well, I don't know, zero point two, we'll just do the same for now, that's fine. Okay, now that should work. Cross our fingers here. There's our. Oh! Ha 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 ha! Oh, you know what I did? Remember that whole speech I gave you about remembering to say tween dot start? Guess what? I forgot to do it. So here we go. Uh, that one's called KB reset dot start. And now it definitely should work. I should probably not say that. Jinx myself. All right, here we go. Kick. Yep. There we go. Perfect. So now we hit it. Except, wait, it's not doing anything. Well, that's because we need to tell it what to do when it encounters uh, a collision with this ball. So, uh, let's come up to this kickbox area 2D. We're going to go ahead and connect a body entered signal to the player script. I'm going to connect. And we're going to say if body.name equals ball then body dot oops, don't put a space linear velocity dot y equals and we'll give it some number like I don't know 300 we'll try that see what that looks like okay so hopefully when I hit this it should knock it up in the air So as the thing makes contact, oh, I did it again. I made this mistake earlier. I forgot that if I'm trying to make it go upward, that Y value needs to be a negative number. Ah, simple mistakes. Okay, let's see. Oh, it works. It doesn't go very high. 300 is not a very high number, but it kind of works. <laughs> it's kind of neat if I keep just kick clicking the button, it keeps just sending that, that arm out there. That's kind of cool. All right. So obviously that's kind of lame, so let's make it a little higher. Let's go... Well, maybe not that high. Let's, let's see if I went... Yeah, we'll do 800. That, that sounds good. Because I want to go a little bit more than half. Okay, here we go. Ah, uh, see, that's a little bit too high now. Uh, we have a pretty lame jump, too. A little, nice little bounce there, though. Uh-oh, so see the problem we're running into? We can only do the arm to the to the right. So here's how we're going to fix that. I left this out earlier just because I know sometimes people put too many fancy things in all at once instead of just focusing and isolating on the simple basic um, primary objective of what you're trying to do. But when we did this tween and we were telling it 
to um, set it from whatever the rotation degree was to the destination of 90 degrees. Well, minus 90 if it's to the right, but what if we want it to be positive 90 if we went to the left? An easy way to do this is to use that direction variable that we had up here. We haven't done anything with this with this direction variable yet. So let me show you what we're going to do here. We're going to say down here when we're doing our, our x input stuff that if x input does not equal 0, we do all this stuff. But we're also going to say that x input I'm sorry, direction is equal to x input. So that way, if we had just gotten done pushing right, uh, this condition here is, is uh, satisfied, and it's going to set direction to positive 1. If we had just gotten done pushing left, then it will set direction to negative 1. But we don't want direction to ever be 0. We want it to be one or the other. Otherwise, we would only ever be able to use direction if we were pushing the button down. I want it to remain at whatever the last pressed button was. I want it to remain a negative 1 if I had gotten done pushing left. And then I let go, and I'm just standing there. So now that we have that set up, that's going to tell us which direction we're basically facing. Really good for like flip H stuff with your sprites on your characters. So now we'll go back to our tween here and we'll say this number that we want to go to, but we're going to say it times direction. But wait a minute, that might not work because if, let me see, let me think about this for a second. If we're facing right, direction would be 1. Yeah, that's right. And so 1 times negative 90 would be negative 90. If we're facing left, it would be negative 1. So negative 90 times negative 1 would be negative 90. So yeah, so that should, or I'm sorry, would be positive 90. So that should work. Negative times negative is positive. Got to remember simple high school math. OK. So let's see. We're kicking to the right. Now I'm going to go ahead and move to the left. And now we're kicking to the left. To the right, to the left. Perfect. Boom. There he goes. Nice. All right. Let's go ahead and make that. Let's make that um, that velocity a little bit less. Let's try 600. I think 600 might be a good number. So a lot of this is just trial and error, and just finding what what works for your your uh, vision of your game. Yep, looks good. So here we get here we have it. So we have a a player that jumps that can bounce the ball up in the air pretty nice. He has a a move to to knock the ball up in the air. He can uh, land on top of the ball and even bounce off of the ball a little bit. Well, if I have coordination to to land on it. Yeah, there it is. Nice. The only thing was just that weird that weird behavior there. I'll have to figure out how to get rid of that. I don't know if maybe the size perhaps has something to do with it. Because when I did this pro project earlier, um, I was not doing that. That was not happening. So if anybody in the comments uh, we wanted, would like to tell me why that's happening, what I could be doing to, to stop that, I would definitely appreciate your input. Anyway, hopefully this is helpful to you, and um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and uh, uh, I will try to uh, get a download link for this, uh, this project, so you can download this and take a look at the code, and and uh, mess with it yourself. And uh, if if Marion, you're watching this, you see you can see how this worked for the basketball game that we're working on. Um, and you can you know obviously change lots of things up here and make this make this different. 
um, change the size, the weight of the ball, of the player, how much jump. Uh, I even have a variable jump in the basketball game. I didn't do variable jump here, but it actually is pretty uh, straightforward to do. Um, just for simplicity's sake, just to show the basic mechanics here, I do this. If you want me to show you how I did my variable jump, I'd be happy to do that as well. Just let me know in the comments or shoot me a message. Okay. Enjoy and happy coding.